Good morning, it's October 23rd, 2025, and this is your daily quiz, episode 17 on risk management. Some topics like risk, uh, we have twice a month because, or twice once a month because we have such a high uh, amount of questions from it. This is in the ASP 11, CSP 11, CHST, SMP, and OSHT. So we're going to talk a little bit different topics, big topic on risk. So manufacturing plant spends heavily on worker compensation, equipment damage, and production delays after repeated machine guarding incidents. The safety director wants to demonstrate the total cost of risk to upper management, which should be included in the total cost of risk calculation. A, direct and indirect costs, including lost productivity, administrative time, and reputation impact. B, only the OSHA fines and penalties. C, only the direct medical insurance costs. D, only the costs that appear in the safety department budget. The answer is A, the direct and indirect costs, including lost productivity, administrative time, and reputational impact. The cost of risk is everything associated with that risk exposure. So we want to include it because, remember, these are real costs. Your time to investigate the accident, the costs of um, productivity, these are real costs. 41, before installing a new chemical storage system like a drumming system below, a safety professional conducts a formal process review involving operators and engineers. They identify potential deviations of overfilling, leaks, and vending failures using structured what-if questions. What risk meant? analysis method is being used. A. Fault tree analysis. B. Hazard operability study. C. Failure modes and effect analysis. D. Job hazard analysis. And the answer is HAZOP. It's a systematic risk analysis tool using a team-based brainstorm to identify process deviations and consequences especially effective in chemical process and safety applications. Again, when you see the word what if, that is a lot of times. What if the pressure increases? What if the, the flow stops? What if the flow drops? These are kind of like what I call uh, nodes, and you pick on every process on it. What if the drumming overfills? These are scenarios you go through it in hazard operability, and then you have what you have to prevent these or what's going to alarm. Logistic facility has frequent forklift near misses and narrow aisles. After an al analyzing incident data, safety team proposes redesigning aisle layouts and added convex mirrors and installing proximity sensors. What type of risk mitigation approach does this represent? A. Risk transfer, risk retention, risk avoidance, risk reduction through engineering and administrative controls. Always that longest answer, risk reduction. You know, it's a lot of money, but I remember being in one of the top 30 companies in the country, and they just made the aisles smaller and smaller because you could put more aisles in a fixed footprint. The only trouble is when you have six inches of clearance, people hit the aisles all the time. You can't drive down hundreds of feet with that little narrow clearance, and uh, that's, you know, eventually they had to do a complete uh, redesigning aisle layouts and stuff. There's no OSHA rules. You just have to have proper layout to be able to do the job. I would also um, talk about uh, doing audits every month. Every employer, every forklift driver, are they wearing a seatbelt? Are they driving right? Are they honking in intersections? You can also have cameras so you can watch people do this because you want to get your best drivers and knowledge that they are doing a great job. And ones that uh, aren't going so good, then maybe we need to do a lot of retraining. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you later.